Hello guys, welcome back to the Black Juicy. My name is Max, I'm the host of the channel, and thank you very much for coming back to watch this content. Just a reminder to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content because we're about to hit 2,000 followers, and a big thank you to my patrons. Today's video, we're going to be talking about a touring rugby championship side, which would be like an equivalent to the Northern Hemisphere British and Irish Lions. So I'm going to pick a 38-man squad comprised of players from South Africa, New Zealand, where I'm from, Australia and Argentina. Just to let you guys know about the representation, I've tried to get it a bit even between the top two teams in here. So I have 14 Kiwis, 14 Springboks, I've got 6 Pumas and just 4 Wallabies. Make sure you um, comment your 15 in the comments section as well. So first off for this team, I want to start off by picking my first choice hooker. I'm going to go with Cody Taylor, who I believe is the best hooker in the world. Excuse my bias, but it's just a fact. He throws brilliantly in the lineout. He's effective around the field, both carrying and tackling. And for the other two hookers, I want to go with Bongi Mbanambi and Julian Montoya. Mbanambi may be in the twilight of his career, but he still has a lot of talent offer and a lot of line-out expertise to offer. Julian Montoya is the Argentinian captain, he's had a very good last few years of international rugby and he's a very experienced player who you just can't look past. Now for the props, at number one I would start Steven Kitsoff. The guy is utterly world class, very very powerful at scrum time and boy it would be a pain to be one of his oppositions. I'm going to go with Ox Enshe, his um, Springbok teammate as another loose head prop. And the third loose head prop I'm going to put out of position. I want to pick Offa Tuunga Fasi, who at 6 foot 5 and 129 kgs is a big massive unit and a very experienced player. He can play at both sides of the scrum and I needed to make room for a certain um, Australian player Taniella Tupo to start at number three. Tupo is an absolute beast and that's why I would start him in my touring rugby championship combined side. I'd then go for Trevor and Yukani off the bench to cover both sides of the scrum. Similar reason to Tuunga Fasi, so they're my jersey 17 and 18. Whereas I would go for Nepo Laulala, another very experienced player with powerful scrumming technique as my third choice tight head prop. For the locks, I'm going to go with Sam Whitelock as my captain of the tour and I'll pair him in the starting at second row with Eben Etzebeth, both massive defensive beasts who carry hard. Eben Etzebeth was probably robbed of a nomination for World Player of the Year last year, and so fair enough if you guys want to put him in as um, your favourite player in the world right now. So yes, Eben Etzebeth and Sam Whitelock is my locks. For the backups though, I'm only going to select three backup locks. The British and Irish Lions had four backup locks. For those, I'm going to go with Luz Diaga because I believe he's the tallest player of the bunch I can pick from, so fair enough, gotta have a big target in the lineout. I'll then go with Guido Petty from Argentina, who is a scrummaging beast and a lineout beast. Then I'll go with Franco Mostert for my other backup lock. Mostert is just six foot six, but he's very, very good. <laughs> The reason I've only gone with three backup locks rather than four is because I want to put Tupo Vai as my number six. He was the first All Black to be born in the 21st century and boy oh boy is he having a rich stream of form in Super Rugby. I can't help but think that if we had an actual decent coach over here in New Zealand, he might actually end up starting at six a fair bit from now on, now that he's been deployed there so, so successfully by the Chiefs. Marcos Kramer, look no further than him if you want a big bruising 6 foot 7 player to be your blind side flanker. Kramer can play at lock as well but he wears 7 for Argentina because they want to use him as a blind side flanker. Now for the open sides, 
I've kind of just picked Michael Hooper for the sake of people not getting outraged at me. I do think he is overrated and stuff, but at the end of the day, he is indeed a good tackler. He is indeed a good runner off the ball. I just don't like how he doesn't compete for the ball properly at the breakdown. Anyway, though, I want to put Hooper at seven just to silence my critics and make sure everyone realizes that I'm trying to be even with the teams here. Anyway, Sia Khaleesi would probably come off the bench for me in this lineup. Sia Khaleesi is just a gargantuan of a spirited man. He just puts so much heart into the way he plays. Whereas my number eight would be Adi Savia, and uh, Pablo Matera and Jasper Visa would be my other backup loose forwards. Matera can play six, seven, and eight, and Jasper Visa is very, very powerful. So if the best player in the world, Adi Savia, is injured, then you've got a big ball carrying number eight in the form of Jasper Visa of South Africa. Now we're gonna go into the backs and I'm going to I'm going to select Aaron Smith. I know the South Africans will be quite outraged, but I want to go with Kobus Reinach off the bench just because of the impact he brings. He's so deceptively fast for a little guy, and he inherited a lot of that pace from his father, who is a former Springbok. I'll then go with Tate McDermott as my third choice halfback, because boy, oh boy, is Tate McDermott improving, and man, does he have some accurate passing coming off the base of the breakdown. Into the first fives I'm starting Richie Mwonga because he's the best first five in the world. I'm then going to have Andre Pollard as my jersey 22 to cover both the midfield and first five. Pollard is over 100 kgs and one of the world's best goal kickers. He remains amongst world rugby's most paid players too. He's got a massive income for kicking those goals over at Montpellier and Quade Cooper is going to be my third first five because who can go past an experienced player that knows how to strut his stuff and kick those goals. Cooper is a bit flashy around the field as well, so that's always a bonus and it makes for the touring team I'm selecting here very entertaining. Over in the midfield, I want to select a South African combo of Damien Dialendi and Lucanio Arm with David Havili as my jersey 23. Havili edges out Geronimo De La Fuente and Anton Leonard Brown for the sake of his versatility. Havili can cover wing fullback first five and second five so the only jerseys he can't wear in the back line are nine and thirteen yep not too bad there the reason i want to go with um with Dialendi and Arm is because they're such physical players and they can offer something different to my outside backs I'm picking. Mwonga's not very big either, so it kind of just makes sense for me to go for quite big midfielders who are real physical. South Africa has used them to great effect as of late. I've gone for Anton Leonard Brown because of his experience and because he's also quick enough to play on the wing. He's just not interested in scoring the tries himself because his distribution is just on another level compared to other players and Della Fuente I've gone for him for similar reasons he's a very effective crash ball runner as well so he's my only Argentinian midfielder now I'm going to the outside backs the reason that I've caused the outrage and not selected Rico Ioane at 13 is because I want him on the left wing with Caleb Clark as my backup left wing because this is a touring side where you just want to get the best players in flat that's why I've gone for Ioane at 11, though he does prefer to play at 13 nowadays. Caleb Clark, a great ball running option if Ioane's injured. I can't wait to see Clark return to Test Rugby this year. At my 14, yes, I have had to skip Will Jordan, and I have had to go for Cheslin Colby. Colby is so good at stepping, he's so, so quick, he's effective under the high ball, and of course, he can kick. Colby's so, so brilliant. Everyone thinks he should have won World Player of the Year in 2020, and you know what? Fair enough, the guy's very good. I made a whole video on how to stop him because I was freaking out about the damage he was going to do to the All Blacks had he had played last year. Um, Will Jordan, though, is my backup right wing. He made my um, World 15 of the Year last year because of Colby just not really featuring enough in test rugby. I'm then gonna go, I'm then gonna go rather for Geordie Barrett as my fullback. He's brilliant under the high ball. He's just a great tactician. He does his analysis and he's such a good communicator who doesn't miss a beat 
of this phenomenal game. I have selected my final Argentinian to be Emiliano Buffelli. He's a very similar player to Jordi Barrett. He just isn't as tall. He's six foot three, whereas Barrett is six foot five. Buffelli's a very good long range goal kicker, just like Barrett. He doesn't quite have the pace, but he also has that versatility. He can play on the wing too. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. This is my rugby championship combined 15. I've selected a 38 man squad and I've told you who of this squad I would put in my starting 15. So guys, I have a challenge for you. You're going to name me your starting 15 in the comments and you're going to follow the Black Jersey over on Instagram and you're going to support me financially if you can afford it by going to Patreon and you're also going to visit my website to see articles like this one. If you're ever keen to just take some time out of your day, relax and do a bit of reading. Thank you so much for the support guys, it means the world to me and I'll see you later okay?